panyangis.com and today we are joined by Andre and Rajim from Flatio and Dave from Nomad X. But you're all a team now, is this right, guys? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, hello. Hi, Dave. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. Nice to see um, you all. So, first of all, I don't know who wants to answer it. Maybe you can do it in parts. So, firstly, tell us about the merge of Flatio with Nomad X, so people can get a little bit of background on what's happened recently. Yeah, we recently we joined each other to join forces because we see a, a huge opportunity here in midterm rentals because uh, midterm rentals now are booming and growing a lot. And this is why we joined because uh, we have a great technology which we have built here in, in Europe and uh, Dave and his experience with uh, onboarding a lot of landlords, with experience with, not, with remote workers from Portugal and uh, we, we have uh, you know, realize that we could be really, there could be a lot of synergies between each other and this is why we uh, joined together, right Dave? Yeah, that's right. So yeah, we saw an opportunity, we see the markets growing very quickly and uh, Radim and his team have uh, a nice head start on the market because they've been in the business now for 10 years with the technology over the last five years. We got started a little bit later and we're a little bit slower in the development. So we got a chance, we met them recently this last summer and just thought it was a great opportunity for us especially with everything going on with the pandemic it just accelerates uh, the business for us and also for Flatio so it was a uh, it just made a lot of sense and we really feel like there's a good fit culturally between the companies as well we really respect Radim and his team and they built, built a great platform have a great operations team and they've rented a lot of apartments over the years so um, yeah we're excited to be partners Hmm. Um, Sharon has just joined us. Hi, guys. <laughs> and oh, hey. Hi, how are you? Uh, so, um, what? It must be annoying for us to ask this question, but I'm sure it will be a common question. What's the difference between you guys and someone like Airbnb? Yeah, main main difference between shorter platforms like Airbnb bookings. They are basically built on requirements of short term. Uh, tenants, which means usually two days, three days long reservations. But you know, when you are moving somewhere for a few months, which are mid-term rentals, it's 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 completely different requirements because you basically need to meet some law requirements. You need to have some lease agreements because you need to register to uh, to foreign police. Uh, they don't have it at all. We have one standardized lease agreement for all, for all world, basically. We have a recurring payment system, so you are able to pay to your local bank account, even though you move to completely different area of the world. And uh, this is the main differences between our platform and short-term platforms. And uh, it's completely different world, completely different requirements and product, and uh, they, they are not so agile, these huge uh, corporate platforms to change it easily to, to midterm. And this is our you know, huge advantage uh, when we compare to them. And uh, this is you know, why we are joined together and we want to win this market of midterm rentals all around the world because we want to allow people to live borderless around the world. And this is what differentiates us between them. Are you operative now all around the world or in uh, more in Europe in this phase and what are your plans for the future in this case? Yeah, in this moment uh, our plans is to to cover all of the Europe because we are now mainly in Central Europe and uh, and now uh, we, we joined some uh, Portugal, Germany but uh, definitely like Scandinavia and South Europe is still missing so in the next two, three years, we want to cover all of the Europe. Then we want to continue to other continents. Like every three years, we want to join another complement so as we would be able to, you know, cover all the world up to, you know, five, seven years. Um, what is the, what do you mean by midterm rentals? So we know what short term is. 
but what would be the kind of minimum stay and the maximum stay for a mid-term rental? No, for us, it's the minimum should be like 14 days, but I would say the minimum, the usually is between one to 12 months, the mid-term rentals. You know, if you live longer than 12 months, you usually tend to stay there for really longer time to to settle down basically and be there really long time. But for us, mid-term rentals represents at this moment, you know, rentals up to 12 months, but more than, you know, 14, 30 days. What, 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 you, you wanna, yeah? yeah? I'm sorry, what, what is your main market at the moment? It's more like a young age people or more families or... Uh, for us, the main group is remote workers, definitely. This is the main target group we have. Remote workers, digital nomads, young professionals. This is the segment that, that uh, live through Fertile because they, they are traveling because of their work somewhere for a few months. This, is like 60 per, this represents like 60% of our uh, tenants. 20% represents uh, internships, students, and 20% represent some local tenants who need to solve uh, their problem because they are renovating their apartment and needs to stay somewhere for one month. Or they are buying a new one, new apartment, and uh, but the developer have some delays, and this is why they need to stay somewhere, but they don't, don't want to pay for, for hotels and uh, they don't have any relatives in the city and this is why they need to find uh, some platform where they can easily move in somewhere and this is what we are uh, also maybe what i haven't mentioned uh, what difference us between airbnb we have much more affordable living even though there's discounts for longer stays it's still Landlords who offer their apartments on these platforms tend to maximize their yield from from their renting. And you know, we we want to we are building a new sustainable supply for midterm living. Of course, our landlords want to earn money because they invest a lot into apartment. But we, we tend to educate them to do it in a more sustainable way, not to drain every tenant because, you know, they spend their, you know, a lot of days. So they save a lot of expenses. And yeah. this is very important. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, and the other side too, just to hit on very quickly is the, uh, you know, the, the, the hosts that we onboard are typically more, you know, local hosts. Um, we also have listings where people can stay with the local host. So for us, the host is a key part of the equation. Whereas I think with some of the other platforms you'll find out there, um, like the Airbnbs and even some of the other players, they're working with hotels. Um, they're working more with professional management that's listing a lot of properties. So you end up with a lot of middlemen. For us, we typically, I'd say like 80% of our inventory is direct to the local host. So we kind of cut out a lot of the middlemen and that affordability transfers over um, to the guests. So we, we ran some analysis on the Nomad X side before the merger and our listings on average were about 50% less than Airbnb. So if you look at a cost of a three month booking on Airbnb for the same exact property on Nomad X or Flatio, it's 50% of the cost. So although the fees may be a little bit different, our fees are less than Airbnb as well. Uh, but when you look at them head to head, all costs included, typically we're coming out about 50% less. So that's huge for the nomads because the nomads are all about affordability, minimalism, and uh, super important. You know, for the standard tourist, maybe they're not as knowledgeable, but the nomads, you know, they're very knowledgeable on what the prices should be, wanting to work direct. Um, and then we then we put a layer on top of that where we also uh, on the Platio side, um, they've got a great program where they insure deposits as before the acquisition. We used to have uh, a lot of the, you know, the, the guests would have to pay a deposit to the host, which could double up the cost of the, the rental. Um, and now through Flatio, we have a, a we have a deposit policy. We're no longer uh, do we need to we need to use deposits where we have an insurance instead. So that that's really nice as well for the nomads and for any traveler really. Just you know, it seems perfect for digital nomads. Is that something we want to talk about because. 
they don't necessarily want to live there for two, three years, which would be long term, and that they, but they also want to stay longer than short term. So it's a real great thing for digital nomads, which you know we've been seeing a big, big growth in, and I think with the sort of COVID has shown that most people can work online now um, as well. So how, how do you guys see the digital nomad industry growing? Is it something that you're focusing on as well? Yeah, well, we think there's a huge tidal wave forming at the moment because obviously people are limited with their travel. So I think we're seeing a lot of right now, especially with the Americans, like Mexico is very hot at the moment. Uh, that's because a lot of the people from the States are going to Mexico. They're very limited in where they can travel at the moment. Uh, but yeah, we see the digital nomad movement really blossoming. Um, there's so many more people now that are working remotely, obviously. They've become comfortable with it. Their companies have become comfortable with it. Everyone's setting up the remote policies at the moment. But we expect, you know, with Nomad X, we don't expect everyone to become digital nomads where they travel the world month after month after month. But we, it, we think it's going to be much more of a nomadic lifestyle where people leave their home come live in Lisbon or Prague or Budapest for a month, two months, three months, and then they return home and they get back to their normal life, but they are so much more energized than they were before. Because what we found is, you know, just working from home or working from the same co-working space, even working from the same office, it just kind of kills your motivation. And at some point, you just need to be rejuvenated. And I think these short-term, one-week, two-week vacations just aren't doing it anymore, given the you know, how much time people are spending on their phones and how intense the work world is. And it's really never off <laughs> these days. So we think, yeah, this nomadic lifestyle is really the way of the future, especially for the younger generation. You know, people that don't have kids. We're seeing a lot of couples actually. So one of the big trends I'm seeing are these kind of like, I call them like power couples, but you know, couples that match up, they start their own coaching business, their own marketing business, their own e-commerce business together, and then they travel the world together. So we're seeing a lot of that in addition to individuals traveling. Um, so it's a lot of individuals, a lot of couples. Mostly I'd say it's like 25 to 45 is the main demographic with most of, I'd say a larger percentage, 25 to 35 as the largest segment of the demographic. Uh, slightly more men than women. Um, yeah, and it's just a, the, the early lifestyle. I would say it's a very early adopter market. Like we always thought this market was actually much bigger than it actually is. But we realized in being in this market for the last three years, it's very early adopter. The community is still rather relatively small. Um, we expect that to grow quite a bit. So whereas the early nomads were very much minimalist, very much like the early people on the internet back in the 1990s, we expect this new wave is gonna be a little bit different because they're potentially gonna have more money to spend. They're new to the lifestyle. They're willing to make investments. So whereas you know, affordability is still super important to everyone, but we're seeing that, that we're going to see a, quite a bit of change, I think, in terms of the uh, profile of the typical digital nomad as we go forward. And a lot of interest in these, a lot of these countries now that are hurting from the, uh, from the pandemic, you know, as a result of short-term travel going away. We think mid-term travel is much more sustainable for a lot of these countries, and it's much more integrated into their culture. There's a lot of value the digital nomads provide back to the local communities, which is huge, whereas tourists kind of come in, they go out, they drink, they party, they do their sightseeing, and then they leave it. <laughs> but the nomads, they really tend to integrate with the community, offering workshops, working together with the locals. So we think it's a much more sustainable way of travel. Obviously, it's not perfect, but we definitely think this is the way of the future. Um, and that's one of the main reasons for the merger is because we think we, we want to get on top of this, start expanding relatively quickly and just get out there because we feel like, yeah, this is a this is going to be a massive market of the future. You know, Nomad X, we're a little bit early in the market, but we think it's huge going forward, especially over this next year. I'd say last year was the year of remote work. This next year and the next year after is going to be the year of the digital nomad. <laughs> what, what, what do you see yourself in five years from now, besides the expanding and getting more area that you cover, what is your plan? Yeah, you know, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we want to cover first through the Europe to provide people who's coming to to your market who want to explore all the people from Asia, US, Southern America, but also Africa, you know, we, we want to allow all these people who want to, you know, um, who want to make feel how, how European live uh, and to to make to to, you know, I go, not. Taste. to taste you know yeah the culture of Europe because we have you know very you know each country is completely different so we want to allow people to really 
uh, firstly travel to to Europe, uh, but then we want to allow people to travel uh, around the world and live really borderless. And this is uh, this is the main. Our main vision is here to really live borderless, allow people live borderless, and uh, build this sustainable supply because at this moment it doesn't exist. Landlords don't know this market at all. And uh, this is our biggest challenge. Not in a, of course, there needs to be, uh, we need to be fit in a product way to offer them their, the features they want. But uh, we want to really educate our supply, our landlords to really uh, be a good host to, to midterm tenants all around the world from different country to different cultures. And somehow aggregate them to, to one huge worldwide community so as everyone could travel for a few months everywhere and it would be uh, available for everyone because you know people for instance from africa don't have so much you know budgets to travel around the world and then we want to allow them also uh, more uh, you know elder people who who make who really fear from traveling for a few months somewhere because they are working as a as a nurses as a standard work uh, workforce who who don't who are not able to you know have the remote work you know remote work because they need to be for instance in hospital but we want to also allow these people to travel and be somewhere for a few months and that's the vision and uh, we want to go continent by continent and uh, we are starting in Europe but definitely Asia is one of the huge market for us as well uh, there's a very nice culture and we want to also bring Europeans there because for us it's something very very uh, very new there and completely different and again we want to allow them to travel there you know and spend there uh, just some time and to allow them to rent here their apartment because maybe they have a mortgage and they can travel there for a few months and this is for us uh, the thing we are building and uh, that's that's very exciting for us and uh, as you said uh, the, the this service can also be used for the local market you say if someone renovates his apartment they can move for a few months using your services so do you see your platform maybe becoming also kind of the default platform for any type of rent even like domestic type it's one of your target uh, definitely is one of our targets not the focus at the moment because we feel that now is the opportunity in remote workers because the world is changing here but uh, definitely the local tenants are coming because they they see that we have nice affordable apartments and we are basically for them the only opportunity because you know long-term platforms don't you know don't have any landlords who allow you to spend their you know free two months because landlords they're looking for tenants for at least 12 months but they are affordable but they are usually unfurnished and they are impossible to move for a few months because landlords don't do it and on the other side short-term landlords tend to have it really expensive so you wanna you don't want to go there so the only way for locals to spend somewhere you know one or two months affordably is flat tire because we have this supply for them who they don't have to invest into furniture they don't need to pay any deposits so we save them a lot of cash flows a lot of worries and these these single things really make them feel comfortable with moving through us because we connect them with maybe their neighbor and they don't know that they rent their apartment on the other, you know, on the opposite of the street, there could be some landlord who offered them the apartment if they ran away. So I'll move there and for me, for them, it will be really close. And this is, we want to connect them between each other very efficiently because, you know, big cities tend to be, you know, more anonymous, even though uh, it's really close. And this is what we also want to allow them to connect. There, there is a lot of cases in a midterm rentals, you know, we are on the market for five years and we can describe like 40 of them, you know, completely different life stories. 
but the biggest potential we see now is the remote workers and the digital nomads and then followed by young professionals and the local market because it's all combined a little bit you know if you are a young person who is just living the family nest uh, you would like to go probably to a bigger city where are bigger companies you would like to test what is uh, your price on on a, on a work market you know but if you if you have a different look at this situation at the same time this is the first time you are a digital nomad because you moved to a new city you are living your home where you live for 20 years so far and you are testing what is your ability you know and if there is no possibility to rent a flat for just a three four months you need to do it for two years five years and then you need to stuck in a city just because you rented a flat and we don't see that this is this is a great idea i think it's better if you can rent it for four months you can test a company a new position if it's really fitting your need and then you can maybe find out hey this is a great company this is a great position the job for me but it can be done remotely so i don't need to stay in this city i can be still employee of this company but i can move completely to a different place in Europe or whatever on the world and I can behave there as a neighbor not as a tourist who is there just to enjoy you know just to spend some money to have a rest from from a work no you live there but you don't need to stay there for your whole life to stuck there you know you can change it next time for another city but still have the same employment to be a remote worker changing the locations, don't have um, commitments somewhere with a mortgage and so on, but still have a um, really uh, perfect life with a lot of uh, emotions, with, uh, but at the same time with some insurance, you know, like you still have an, uh, an uh, employment. Um, I think that's it guys, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, we hope that you do uh, expand to Southeast Asia, please let us know when you do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. <laughs> thank you so very much. Thank you for the interview. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much guys. Bye. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye.